Hi, welcome everybody. This is Yohan and in this episode, we're gonna make this Lanyard ID wallet. The finished measurements of this little wallet are approximately three and a half inch by four and a half inch. It comes with a clear ID slot at the front that will fit the average ID size, like a size of a credit card. And there is a main zipper compartment where you can put extra card or a little bit of cash. And there is also a little zipper pocket at the back to store some coins or maybe chapstick or lip balm. This is a functional and practical little wallet, especially great for students or teacher or somebody who works in the corporate office where you have to always carry your ID or credential with you. Or this can just make a great alternative um, if you don't feel like carrying your purse or wallet with you. So this will come pretty handy. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. First, we're gonna work on the front ID pocket. So we will start by sewing the side panels to the clear vinyl. So go ahead and prepare the side panel pieces and the clear vinyl as well. I'm using the gauge 8 clear vinyl here. So we're gonna sandwich the side panels with the vinyl fabric. Lay the lining piece right side up and then lay the vinyl, aligning the long side edges of the vinyl with the long side edges of the lining. And then lay the main fabric piece right side down, just like so. Now go ahead and secure them in place with some sewing clips and then sew along the edges with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. My walking foot is handling this vinyl perfectly well. You may also use Teflon foot. Press the seams towards the side. I'm just finger pressing here. You can also use hair marker, but you may want to shy away from iron. Then go ahead and top stitch with about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Now repeat the same to the opposite side. Again, sewing with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance, finger press, and top stitch. Alright, so this piece should now measure 4 inches wide with the side panels attached. Next, we're going to bind the top and the bottom part of the pocket. So go ahead and prepare two binding strips. So you will need 1.5 inch wide strip. So do the typical folding and pressing method. Starting by folding the strip in half and press and then fold the edges towards the center fold and press and then fold again in half and press. Now go ahead and insert the short edges into the fold of the binding all the way in and then secure them in place with some sewing clips. I like to have my binding just a slight longer than what I need and then trim off any excess fabric later. Alright, now go ahead and stitch along the folded edges of the binding. I'm still using my walking foot here and I'm sewing about an eighth of an inch from the folded edges. When you sew, just make sure that your needle is also catching the bottom side as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess binding and then we're going to bind the opposite side exactly the same way. Again, I'm going to trim off the excess binding and voila, the ID pocket is ready to go. Mark the center point of the long side of the pocket piece with a disappearing fabric marker. Simply by folding it in half and then mark the center fold. Next, you want to prepare the front exterior piece. Apply fusible fleece to the wrong side of the fabric that you cut half an inch smaller all around and of course center the position. Now mark the center point of the long side of the front exterior as well. Now lay the ID pocket piece on the right side of the front exterior piece. Aligning the side edges and center the position of course by matching the side center point. Then you want to clip them in place and then base stitch along the side edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now go ahead and stitch the bottom part of the ID pocket with an 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now we're gonna sew 5 8 of an inch from the side edges 
to create the actual slot for the ID. So you want to start from the top of the pocket, backstitch to reinforce it of course, and then go down to the bottom of the pocket, and of course you want to backstitch again, and then repeat the same to the opposite side. Alright, so our ID pocket is done. Now if you want to, it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of testing, so go ahead and grab your ID card. So your card should fit sort of right, so it's not too snug that it's a struggle to slide it in, yet it's not too loose that it will fall too easy when you flip it upside down. Next, we're going to work on the zipper pocket, which will also be the back exterior of this wallet. So go ahead and prepare four panels. You will need to cut panel 1 and 2 from the main fabric, and panel 3 and 4 from the lining fabric. Fuse panel 1 and 2 with fusible woven interfacing that you cut half an inch smaller sidewise. And then you want to fuse panel 4 with fusible fleece that you cut half an inch smaller all around. Now let's work on the zipper tabs. So go ahead and cut up two little rectangles from the main fabric. So you will need an all-purpose zipper measuring one inch wide and you want to trim off your zipper to measure exactly at five and a half inch. Fold the long side of the zipper tab in half. Position that on the edge of your zipper, aligning the raw edges of the zipper tab with the edges of your zipper. And then do the same to the opposite side. Then go ahead and stitch along the folded edges with about an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you can trim off the excess zipper to reduce the bulk, about quarter of an inch from the seam line. Now we're ready to assemble our zipper pocket. So panel 1 will be the upper zipper panel, and panel 2 and 3 will be the lower zipper panel. Now I position my zipper with the zipper pull on my left hand side. You may do the opposite, no problem at all. Just keep it consistent with the zipper closure later. So let's start by sewing panel 1. So go ahead and lay that on the right side of the zipper panel, aligning the bottom edges of the panel 1 with the upper edges of the zipper panel. Now you can clip them in place and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, press the seams. You can either finger press or use hair marker like I do here. And then top stitch. Now you want to lay panel 2 right side up, and then lay the zipper right side down, just like so. Then you want to lay panel 3 right side down. Secure them in place with some sewing clips, and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Again, you want to open the sandwich and then press the seams, both the outside and the inside panel as well and then top stitch. Now go ahead and lay panel 4 right side up, and then lay the zipper panel wrong side down, just like so, and then go ahead and base stitch all around with 1 eighth of an inch of seam allowance. And there you have it guys, our zipper pocket is done. Next we're gonna work on the ring tab. So go ahead and cut a little rectangle, fold the short sides in half and press, and then open the fold, and then fold the edges towards the center fold, and press, and then fold everything in half again, and press. So you should end up with a half an inch wide strip. Now go ahead and stitch along the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now 
Now grab your keychain ring and then insert the strip through the hole of the ring and then stitch as close as you can to the ring. Position the tab on the top center point of the front exterior piece. So you want to make sure that the keychain ring is on the same side as the opening of the vinyl pocket. Then go ahead and clip them in place and then stitch along the edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. To make the lanyard, you will need a 36 inch long by 2 inches wide strip of fabric. Since I'm using fat quarter here, I'm going to have to join two strips together. So here I'm cutting two strips measuring 2 inches wide from the width of the fabric. And as usual, I'm going to join them together on bias. So here I've already joined my strips. Now I'm going to go ahead and press the seams open and trim these to measure exactly at 36 inches. Fold and press the strip to make a half an inch wide strip exactly the same way we did with the ring tab. Now go ahead and grab the swivel hook and then insert the strip through the hole of the swivel hook and then pull the strip through just like that. Now meet both ends of the strips together. Just make sure that um, the strip isn't twisted. And then you want to open the fold of both ends and then lay them right sides together just like so. And then go ahead and stitch with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. This is the same exact method as making wristlet strap. So if you've already made one before, this should come really easy for you. Now you can finger press the seams open and then refold this again. And then stitch all around the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And you want to start from the open edge first. Move the swivel hook out of the way as you go. Now stitch as close as you can to the swivel hook to secure that in place. I'm stitching about half an inch from the swivel hook. Now you can just stitch one line back and forth to reinforce it. Or you can pivot your needle and make a little rectangle, just like what I do here. It's totally up to you. And there you go guys, the lanyard is done. Now for the interior of the wallet, you will need to cut two rectangles from the lining fabric. Alright, now we're ready to assemble our wallet. So take your back exterior piece, the one with the zipper pocket, and lay that right side up. And then take the zipper and lay that right side down, making sure that the zipper pull of the pocket and the closure are facing the same direction. That's one of the reasons we started from the back exterior first. Now go ahead and grab the lining piece and lay that right side down. Clip them in place and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, go ahead and press the seams and top stitch. Now lay the front exterior piece right side up and then lay the zipper panel right side down. And then lay the lining piece right side down. And of course, you want to align the side and the top edges. Clip them in place and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Again, you want to open the sandwich, press the seams, and then top stitch. Alright, now we're ready to do the final assembling. First, you want to unzip your zipper at least halfway. And then separate your fabric so that the exterior pieces are right sides together and the lining pieces are right sides together. Now we're gonna secure them in place with some sewing clips, starting by matching the zipper seams. So your zipper teeth should be facing the lining side, if that makes sense. 
Once everything is secured, go ahead and sew all around, leaving about 2 to 3 inches of opening at the bottom of the lining to turn the wallet inside out later. You want to sew with 3 eighths of an inch of seam allowance. Next, you're going to use your scissors and trim off all the corners. Just be careful not to cut through the stitches. Trim the side seam allowances as well, about an eighth of an inch away. Now turn your wallet inside out through the opening hole. Poke the corners gently. You can use a knitting needle or chopstick or point turner to help you out. So your wallet is pretty much done at this point. Use your hand to shape up the wallet, make it nice and neat. Or if you want, you can press this with iron. Just be mindful with the zipper and the vinyl pocket. Now fold the raw edges of the opening hole of the lining towards the inside about 3 eighths of an inch and then stitch along the edges to close the opening. Once you've done that, you can put the lining back inside, hook the lanyard to the keychain, and voila, your little ID wallet is done. And that's about it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting projects. Goodbye.